everybody, Jason Abelson for BoxCaster here in Toronto with the reigning WBO middleweight champion of the world, Billy Joe Saunders. Billy, a few days away for the big fight with David Lemieux. How has camp been so far? Yeah, camp's been good. Um, you know, it's just uh, a bit cold, but nothing I'm not used to back in England. As you see now, you know, uh, sharpening the tools, everything's done, fitness is there, weight's good, sharpening the tools, getting ready for a week on Saturday. How different is fighting outside the comforts of homes? I noticed you're obviously seem to be in better shape now and almost better spirits than before. Is that because there's maybe an added motivation or just a change in scenery going into a fight? No, I think that I've changed a lot of things, trainers and uh, mindset. You know, these big fights wasn't coming. You know, I won the world title, you know, Golovkin, I've signed to fight him twice, Canelo, uh, Eubank Jr., none of these happening. So, um, you know, finally a big one's come, up, come in front of me and you get the bit between your teeth and you know you have to perform. Um, and it's nice being out of the comfort zone, being in Canada, you know, being in, in someone's back garden because it brings the best out of me. Uh, David Lemieux, obviously a very, you know, he's a very straight ahead type of fighter, all power. You've got far more wrinkles in your game than he does. Does he have the game that might be able to adjust to what you bring to the table come fight night? Listen, David Lemieux has one way of fighting, come forward and have a punch up. Um, which I will be doing at times, but when it suits me, not when it suits him. Um, if you want to go boxing chess match, then I could beat him with a blindfold on. Um, I'm that confident. But um, listen, boxing, anything can happen. But listen, this game's about hitting and not getting hit. As long as I go here, come here, um, you know, get trapped fairly on the scorecards, I should beat him, not a problem. Do you feel you have to do more as a fighter on the road than you might have if you were fighting in the UK against a guy like Lemieux? And does that compromise your game plan at all? Well, listen, it keeps me on my toes. It keeps me sharp, my mind sharp, not switching off. So um, I feel that I, I can't let it go close. But also, I need to remember one thing, that I'm the champion. And uh, a fighter has to come and take the champion's title, not just be close and get awarded it. So uh, that's the way I'm looking at it. How big is this fight? I mean, is is the next path the Golovkin Alvarez winner? Most definitely. Listen, he, David's had his chance against Golovkin and come up short. Not just come up short; he's come up miles short. Um, so listen, let someone else have a turn now. I'm I'm fit, ready. I will, I want Golovkin or Canelo. Are either of those guys on their A game right now? Do you think? You know. These fighters have got a lot of miles on the clock. They're going to fight each other again and you know, put more miles on the clock. And uh, for a boxer as slick as myself, you know, it could be uh, it could be a bit tricky. Now, the middleweight division is getting more crowded and more crowded. Guys coming up from 154, Andre, um, and you know, Jacobs has always been there. But there seems to be more of an emphasis on 160 now. You know, is there a plan B? or a guy you're looking at as an alternate if, for whatever reason, Golovkin and Alvarez doesn't happen? Listen, I am fully focused on David Lemieux. I've not looked up no plan Bs, no plan Cs, but in my plans, I've got from A to Z for this fight. Get through this, then I want Golovkin or Canelo. Tough to make a prediction going in. Obviously, if it goes the distance, most people would think it would be your type of fight. Is that how you're seeing it, to extend him and maybe take him places he's not quite familiar with being? Not really. You know, he's had a lot more knockouts than me and a lot more fights, but I've done more rounds. So, you know, I could be suited to the rounds better than him. And nobody knows this, but when they're in there with me, they find it a lot trickier and a lot harder to connect how they probably think they will. That's definitely for sure. Willie Monroe Jr. He had a lot of success with Glofkin, even though he got beat and quit in round six, and David Lemieux round nine. But Willie Monroe, you could argument say he had more success with Glofkin because he's more trickier. You know, I don't think Lemieux hit Glofkin what ten times in the full fight. Kept brushing his hair out of his eyes, and and that was about it. So that's all I see. So let's see what David Lemieux's got a week Saturday. You think Lemieux uh, spat the bit a little for that fight? And maybe the 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 event was the occasion was a little too big for him at the time. And do you think maybe he's changed, or can a can a leopard can a tiger change his stripes? Look, when somebody gets beat, he's like a. I'll tell you what he is like. He's like a cage lion. Now you get some fierce cage lions who've never been let out the cage before. Don't know what it's like to be let out the cage. 
he's been let out the cage three times, and three times he's been tamed, tamed down. So he's a tame lion. I've never been beaten. I've never ever been beaten. As a pro, I feel that confident of going on finishing undefeated is, you know, I wouldn't come here. I'm not coming here to lose, make up the numbers, come here for money, this and that. Keep the money, let me win. This is, this is what I'm about. I want to win more than anything. David Lemieux, he knows what it's like. He knows when that gas is gone, he knows his limit. Because he's had it three times. I don't know my limit. I don't know my limit. But I know one thing, I've got heart of a line. So many things are happening at 160. You think people are taking that weight for granted that it's somehow it's easier money at 160 in, than it would in. be at 154? Come in. Come in. This is, uh, this is for porno. Porno TV. Uh, we're doing, doing an interview for boxing. Oh, for boxing? <laughs> yeah. Okay, hold on. I just want to I just wanna shout out my kids, okay? Go on, I'm two sure. of my kids. I have two, Jamoy and Josiah, okay? Just shout them out, okay? Love them. Jamoy! Yeah. Yellow yeah. Gallum! <laughs> Yeah. Do you think people are taking 160 for granted? Like somehow it's easy, you know, they could come up from 154 and dip this, their toe in the pool? Because everybody knows that this is where the money is at this weight. You know, everybody knows this is where the big fight is. Your Canelo, your Golovkin, your myself. Every, everybody knows that. So, um, you know, they're all coming up a weight or they're just lazy fat bastards who can't be bothered to get down to their own weight. But listen, I'm, I'm, listen if, if Golovkin and Canelo don't want me, or I beat David Lemieux, then who's the next best? Danny Jacobs. Let's get it on, you know. So we'll have it, whoever, whoever. I'm not, I'm not ducking anybody. People need to realise that. I've never ducked no one. Never pulled out of a fight in my life. Well, listen. A lot of people have you pegged as a favourite going in next week. I think David Lemieux's got a tough task ahead of him, and I wish you nothing but the best of luck then. And thanks for your time today. Thank you very much, brother. God I bless you. That. Thanks, Billy. Appreciate that. Thanks,